Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and it's, I think it's November 12th or 13th, it's the Sunday of, of this weekend, and I just wanted to give a quick update about my orchids that are in uh, my friend Jean's greenhouse and show you some, some blooming walkerianas again. Uh, the, pretty much the same ones that I showed you last time, but there's more flowers this time, more of those buds opened up. But uh, before I do that, I'll do a quick walk around of the plants and show you how they're doing. Uh, spoiler alert, they're, they're doing pretty well, as you can imagine, in a, uh, a really nice greenhouse. I am watering these guys once or twice a week, probably twice a week, actually. Uh, I was last here on Tuesday, and I'm here again on Sunday, so I'm, I might increase the frequency. Of course, it's a new growing condition or new grow area that I'm not used to, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, the best rhythm and pattern to get to get water to the orchids so that it's not too much and of course it's not too little. Uh, but you know, Gene has a whole lot of stuff over here uh, that's mounted and uh, needs some water and, and just generally everything looks a little thirsty. Um, I, I'm taking care of her plants as well, uh, what, what orchids she has left over here. <clears throat> and uh, I've turned the fans off so it doesn't sound like it's a hurricane in here, but let me turn the camera around and I'll show you my plants. So we've got uh, most of my small seedlings here. I've got a Wakariana over there that, from my friend Susan and another one up here, both of which I believe have bloom spikes on them. I think they're both hybrids. Uh, you know, one of them, uh, I think that one is Kenny and the other one is another uh, potential Wakariana hybrid. I'll have to check the tags, I don't remember, but uh, to see them blooming in the fall is great. You know, I, I have, if you remember, I have those other two Wakarianas, a Rubra and a, uh, an Alba, that both bloom in the spring every year. And looking back at their heritage, they have Estrella da Colina in there, and that, that is uh, from that Orchid Glade line of breeding. And, of course, there's a lot of GZI in there, although I, I suspect at this point, not a whole lot is left, but it's enough to to trigger spring blooming flowers for those guys. But uh, this, so I've got my fowls here, my phalaenopsis here. I've got one at home because it's blooming. And I guess I should do an update video for the few plants that I have at home. And it's really the orchids, excuse me, the imports and anything that's in bloom. That isn't giant like this Ancelia africana. This is the first bloom that I've seen on this particular one. Really cool flower. This is the first time I've seen this plant blooming. It's odd that it's blooming in fall. This is normally a spring bloomer, but uh, you know I'm not complaining. Uh, even though it was growing in pretty deep shade, and it still decided to put out a fall bloom. This is great. So I, I'm really happy with that. Um, everything else is chugging along. My my uh, Rincalalia glauca should put on a, another great show this year. It's just a, a bush-sized plant, I guess you could say. I think the only thing that it, it really isn't doing super spectacularly for me is this Bulbophyllum delatescens. Uh, col Colchicine treated, I got this from Bill Toms as a flask a couple years ago, and I don't know what's going on, but the, the leaves seem to be turning a little yellow. I kind of wonder if it is just being sensitive to the hard water that we have, even though um, I keep adding citric acid to bring the pH down. You know, some some of these bulbos are a little more finicky about their their water quality, so there could be some issues there. Uh, the seedlings are, are just generally doing really well. My Paraphalaenopsis, which I've been super excited to keep alive for a couple years, are so slow growing, but it's been doing pretty well. Um, I thought I was doing well, and I saw Jean's, and she has some really big ones. And there's some really large ones over here, but, um, hopefully they'll blo they'll throw blooms this, th this coming year. I would love to see, I've never seen Paraphalaenopsis blooming in real life, so I'm excited to see that. This is that Wakariana. Um, so this one is actually pendentive, of course, um, and this is from Susan, and she gave me this big giant cutting when I moved to San Antonio, which I'm really grateful for. 
Um, and you can see we've got possibly one spike here and I don't know if the camera can peek around this new growth. You can see it right there, kind of fuzzy, but it looks like a smaller version of this guy here. And I, I bet if I were to dig in, I would be able to find some more of those. Um, I, I have some, some of the moss, the, oh, what's the name? Anyway, I'll put the name up here on the screen. I, I'm totally blanking on the name. It didn't do too well. Uh, some of it's starting to come back, but it's just to add humidity around the roots for these mounts while growing outside in brutally hot Texas summer conditions. This one is, so this one is Kenny. This is another division that I got from Susan. And you can see how far along this particular spike is. So looks like just one for this plant, which is, I'm fine with. I'm excited to see that blooming. And um, uh, my other Ancelia Africana is doing really nicely. My larger, uh, this is Purpurata, Cattleya Purpurata, and this is a Schomburkia hybrid, which is really cool. Um, my larger, just generally, Cattleyas are doing much better. You can see this is that skinny Purpurata that used to have absolutely gigantic club-sized bulbs, and they're all shrivelly. In fact, a, a couple years ago, I said... I made a video, kind of what's what went wrong with my cattleyas and what went right. And there were two different videos. And this plant was what went right. And I was showing these gigantic bulbs. So to see them all shriveled is frustrating. But if you see these roots coming out here, we've got new growth here. One and another one back there. And you can see the roots here are just really taken off. Um, I am really hoping that these roots turn down into the media more. And, um, you know, now that I stick my finger in there, it's been since Tuesday since I watered these guys. It's a little more broken down than I'd like. So I might have to repot this guy. Yeah, look at this. See this dirt? That's broken down media. So actually, <laughs> glad that I'm making this video. You know, I am going to go through and change the media. Um, Jean has a bunch of extra Orchiata sitting around, so I'll, she said that I could use this. I guess I'll do an emergency repot right now. And, you know, I don't think it's that bad. It's not real great, but it's not real bad either. Uh, regardless, it shouldn't be holding water probably for this long um, anyway, now you guys can you guys can see how I make orchid decisions in in real time. I have this uh, Phalaenopsis tetraspis. It's a cerulea. It looks like it's putting out a new bud here, which is nice. Its counterpart I have at home, another cerulea tetraspis, which is uh, is blooming. This one actually got hit really hard with the mites the spider mites, and I did not realize this until it was too late, and you can see how far advanced this infection got before I was able to hit it with some imidacloroprid. Uh, Bayer 3-in-1 is the, is the one that I used. My seropodiums are all up here, doing really nicely. They should be getting ready to go to sleep. I have hanging pods on one of these. Oh, there they are. I don't know if you can see that. The, sh the sun is right here, so it's kind of making everything in the camera look dark. Um, but these are the, the two hanging pods I have left on the St. Ledriganum. These are the catacetums whose leaves I chopped off before I moved everything over here. You can see this one is blooming. This is one that I have an AOS award on. It is, um, the clonal name is Denali, but it's Rebecca Northern by uh, Milana Davison. And I am totally blanking on the name right now. It, it is a named hybrid. Of course, as you can tell by the tag, it was not when I originally got it. Peristeria alata is doing nicely.
And then I have something up here. Oh no, I broke the tag. Neomorea Wallisii. I'll need to get that tag back in there appropriately so I remember. And then a bunch of medium sized Cattleya types. I've got a Cycnokes here that's growing nicely and a Bulbophyllum. And basically my Cycnokes that are still growing or doing stuff uh, I'm keeping here and then once they go dormant I'll kick them back behind me. This is one of the cool things that I got from Afri Orchids at Redland Festival this October. This is a little guy here. I think it's it had a spike right there. It looks like it's shriveled up, so it didn't it didn't particularly care for being transported halfway across the world and then thrust into my backyard and then this greenhouse here, which kind of makes sense that it wouldn't be super excited about that, but oh well, I'll get uh, blooms next year, hopefully. Again, nothing too too spectacular going on. Uh, got some roots on this purparata here, which is always nice to see. New growth here on the shrodery that I got from Jim and I Orchids. Does not want to come out. Looks pretty good. Really cool bloom. I saw one bloom. I'm excited to see the blooms on on the larger plant um, this coming summer and on a plant that has seen much better light. Uh, this is Lou de Maniana with a little stunted growth here from growing in the shade. Uh, it should be growing better now that it has brighter conditions. And then a, a big old Maxima, actually, uh, Jean has decided she does not want this one. This is a Cerulea, so she gave it to me, which is really amazing. Here's the Paraphalaenopsis that I mentioned earlier. And these are the Walkerianas with more blooms than we saw last time, plus more buds on different plants. See, it kind of looks like these buds are, are, you know, being thrown up almost. The Walkerianas tend to grow a uh, special growth just for their, for their blooms, and you can see that on this particular plant. And you can see it on these buds back here on this other plant. It's got one, two, three large spikes. I believe there's one poking out the other side. You can't really see it, but you have to believe me, there's one over there. Maybe more importantly, are the ones that are in bloom. Absolutely beautiful. Love the color and the scent. I wish I could transmit scent to you. Of course I cannot. More buds here. But check out these ones. The semi-alba is just gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. The buds that I showed you a week or two ago, two weeks ago, are just kind of starting to fade, but definitely being replaced wonderfully by these. We got this really cool cerulea down here. This is Manhattan Blue on a really big plant. Uh, I showed you these buds, or these flowers last time, two weeks ago, and uh, they're they're wrapping up, of course. And here's that other pair of Phalaenopsis. Look how big this thing is. Gigantic. This is an old plant. These things are slow, slow growing. And then Jean's got some other things. Some of her favorite Cattleyas that she decided to keep around as she pared back her her collection quite a bit. There's another, uh, I think that might be Nobilior. I don't know if it's even, the camera's being clear. I think it's focusing on my hand. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. Not a whole lot going on over there. So I'm going to wrap this video up. And I will talk to you guys next weekend. See ya.